Have you ever wondered how one of the most destructive regimes in modern history came to power? The genesis of Nazi Germany is a study in the power of desperation and the lengths humanity can go when pushed to the brink. Let's take a step back to post-World War I Germany. The nation was reeling, burdened by the punitive Treaty of Versailles. This treaty, signed in 1919, placed the blame for the war squarely on Germany's shoulders, demanding substantial territorial concessions and staggering reparations. The German economy buckled under this weight, and the people were left grappling with a deep sense of national humiliation. As if this wasn't enough, the 1920s brought with it the Great Depression. This worldwide economic downturn hit Germany particularly hard. Unemployment soared, and hyperinflation made the German mark virtually worthless. The once proud nation was now a landscape of breadlines and desperation. In these troubled times, political instability was rampant. The Weimar Republic, Germany's democratic government established after World War I, struggled to maintain control. Frustration with the government was widespread, and extremist political parties began to gain traction. Among these was the National Socialist German Workers' Party, better known as the Nazi Party. Its leader, a charismatic man named Adolf Hitler, promised the German people a return to national pride and economic stability. His fiery speeches blamed Germany's woes on the Versailles Treaty, the perceived weakness of the Weimar Republic, and a deep-seated anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. In this climate of desperation and anger, Hitler's message resonated with many. The Nazis began to rise in prominence, moving from the fringes to the center of the German political landscape. And so, the stage was set for one of the darkest chapters in human history. A perfect storm of events catapulted the Nazis from the fringes of German politics to its very epicenter. How did a failed artist become a dictator with absolute power? This is the question that haunts the annals of history when discussing Adolf Hitler, the man who would lead Nazi Germany. Hitler's ascension was not an overnight occurrence. It was a calculated, gradual climb to power fueled by his charismatic speeches that captivated the masses. His oratory skills were exceptional tapping into the frustrations and fears of the German people, still reeling from the economic strain following World War I. Hitler presented himself as the answer, the beacon of hope who would restore Germany to its former glory. But how did he go from being a voice in the crowd to the leader of the Nazi party? Hitler's rise within the party was swift, propelled by his fervor and determination. He quickly climbed the ranks, his speeches striking a chord with the disillusioned masses, and by 1933, his influence was so pervasive that he was appointed as chancellor. However, Hitler's ambitions extended far beyond the role of chancellor. He sought absolute power, and he found it in the Enabling Act of 1933. This act, ostensibly a temporary measure to handle the crisis the country was facing, effectively allowed Hitler to enact laws without the approval of the Reichstag, Germany's parliament. The democratic processes that once defined the Weimar Republic became obsolete, replaced by the iron fist of Hitler's rule. With this newfound authority, Hitler began to consolidate his power, silencing opposition and establishing a totalitarian regime. He implemented policies that centralized power in his hands, turning the democratic Weimar Republic into a dictatorship under his control. In just a few years, Hitler had transformed the Weimar Republic into a totalitarian regime. A failed artist had become a dictator with absolute power, marking the beginning of one of the darkest chapters in human history. What beliefs drove the Nazis to commit such horrific acts? At the core of Nazi ideology was the belief in racial purity, a concept that was not only misguided but also dangerous. The Nazis believed that the Aryan race, which they identified as the Germanic peoples, was superior to all others. This led to the classification of individuals based on their racial and biological characteristics, and subsequently, the systematic persecution of those deemed racially undesirable. Now among these so-called undesirables were the Jews. Anti-Semitism was deeply ingrained in Nazi ideology, stemming from centuries-old prejudices. However, the Nazis took this hatred to a new level. Jews were blamed for Germany's economic and social woes and were depicted as a threat to the purity and survival of the Aryan race. This bigotry culminated in the Holocaust, a genocide that killed six million Jews. Territorial expansion was another pillar of Nazi ideology. Hitler believed in the concept of Lebensraum, or living space. According to this, the Germanic peoples needed more land for their racial survival and growth. 
This idea justified the Nazis' aggressive expansionist policies, leading to the annexation of Austria and the Sudetenland, and eventually triggering World War II. Furthermore, the Nazis sought to create a totalitarian state where all aspects of life were under their control. They suppressed opposing political parties, controlled the press, and used propaganda to manipulate public opinion. This consolidation of power helped them implement their radical policies without resistance. Finally, it's crucial to note that these ideologies didn't exist in isolation. They fed off each other, creating a toxic brew of hate and ambition. For instance, the belief in racial purity fueled anti-Semitism, which in turn justified the territorial expansion as a means to secure the survival of the pure race. Similarly, the totalitarian state allowed these harmful ideologies to be put into practice, leading to mass persecution and genocide. The Nazi ideology was a toxic brew of hate and ambition that would lead to unthinkable atrocities. How could a modern civilized nation commit genocide on an industrial scale? This question often echoes when we delve into the horrifying chapter of the Holocaust. A word derived from the Greek holocauston, meaning a sacrifice by fire, the Holocaust was the systematic state-sponsored extermination of approximately 6 million Jews by Nazi Germany, led by Adolf Hitler. The Holocaust was an unprecedented genocide, encompassing the murder of millions, the majority of whom were Jews. The Nazis who came to power in Germany in January 1933 believed that Germans were racially superior and that the Jews, deemed inferior, were a threat to the so-called German racial community. This perspective led to the implementation of the Final Solution, a chilling euphemism for the plan to annihilate the Jewish people. The Nazis established extermination camps across Eastern Europe. Auschwitz-Birkenau, Treblinka, Belzec, Sobibor, and Majdanek are among the names that have since become synonymous with the horrors of the Holocaust. These camps were the sites of mass murder, carried out primarily through the use of gas chambers, where men, women, and children were put to death en masse. But it wasn't just the Jews. The Nazis also targeted other groups based on their perceived racial inferiority such as the Roma, and others based on their political and behavioral grounds, among them communists, socialists, Jehovah's Witnesses, and homosexuals. The international community's response to the Holocaust was complex and fraught with hesitation. Many nations, including the United States and Britain, initially refused to accept large numbers of Jewish refugees, partly due to the economic pressures of the Great Depression and widespread anti-Semitism. It was only as reports of mass murders began filtering out of Europe that the world began to understand the full scale of Hitler's final solution. After the war, the world was left grappling with the enormity of the Holocaust. The Nuremberg trials were held to bring Nazi war criminals to justice, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted by the United Nations in 1948, in part to ensure that such a genocide would never again occur. The Holocaust stands as a chilling reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink. It compels us to confront the capacity within human societies for extreme violence and prejudice. The Holocaust is not merely a historical event. It is a stark warning from history and a call for eternal vigilance. The stories of survival and resilience that emerged from this dark period also remind us of the indomitable spirit of humanity, even in the face of the most unimaginable horrors. Did the Nazis ever come close to achieving their goals of global domination? It's a question that has sparked countless debates among historians and scholars. Let's delve into the early successes of the Nazi war machine and the turning points that marked the beginning of the end. At the dawn of World War II, the Nazis appeared invincible. The Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War, was a military strategy that relied on speed, surprise, and overwhelming force to quickly conquer enemy territories. The strategy was devastatingly effective. Poland fell in less than a month, Denmark and Norway in just two months. By mid-1940, the Nazis had swept through Western Europe, occupying France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. The Nazi war machine seemed unstoppable. Hitler's vision of a Nazi-dominated world as terrifying as it was seemed to be within grasp. But as the saying goes, pride comes before a fall. And for Nazi Germany this fall was precipitous. The turning point came with Operation Barbarossa, the Nazi invasion of Russia. Hitler, underestimating the resilience of the Russian people and the harshness of the Russian winter, embarked on what would become one of the costliest military failures in history. The Russian winter, as brutal as it was unyielding, 
ground the Nazi advance to a halt. The Nazis, ill-prepared for such conditions, suffered heavy losses. The failed invasion of Russia marked the first major defeat for the seemingly invincible Nazi war machine. The entry of the United States into the war in December of 1941 was another critical turning point. The United States, with its vast resources and industrial might, tipped the scales in favor of the Allies. American entry into the war marked the beginning of a sustained Allied offensive that would gradually push back the Nazi forces. The Nazis, once on the offensive, found themselves on the defensive. The tide of war had turned. The dream of a Nazi-dominated world was slipping away. But the Nazis, in their hubris, refused to see the writing on the wall. They continued to wage a war they could no longer win, causing untold suffering and devastation. In the end, it was not the strength of the Allied forces alone that brought about the downfall of Nazi Germany. It was also the hubris of the Nazi leadership, their underestimation of their enemies, their overestimation of their own capabilities, and their disregard for the human cost of their actions led to strategic blunders that hastened their downfall. Hubris and strategic blunders marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. And while the Nazis did come close to achieving their goals, their arrogance and strategic missteps ultimately led to their defeat. It's a stark reminder that power, when not tempered by wisdom and humility, can lead to ruin. How did the world bring down a regime that seemed invincible at its peak? That's the question that looms large as we delve into the final years of World War II and the fall of Nazi Germany. The year was 1944, and it was clear that the tide of the war was turning. The Allied invasion of Normandy, commonly known as D-Day, was a key turning point. This monumental military operation, involving over 100,000 soldiers from the United States, Great Britain and Canada, marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. The once seemingly invincible Third Reich was now on the defensive, and the Allies were on the march. But the fall of Nazi Germany wouldn't come without a fight. The regime's resilience was evident in the Battle of the Bulge, one of the last major German offensives on the Western Front. This was a desperate attempt to push the Allies back and regain the initiative. But despite initial successes, the offensive ultimately failed further weakening the German forces. Meanwhile, the relentless bombing of German cities by the Allies continued unabated. The destruction was immense, with cities like Dresden and Berlin reduced to rubble. This was total war, and the civilian population was not spared. The aim was to break the German war machine and the will of the people to resist. While the war raged on the Western Front, the Eastern Front was also crumbling. The Red Army was advancing, recapturing territory and pushing towards the heart of the Reich. The Battle of Berlin, a brutal and bloody confrontation, marked the final major offensive of the war in Europe. Finally, in the spring of 1945, after 12 years of Nazi rule and six years of a global war, the end came. Adolf Hitler, the man who had led Germany into this catastrophic conflict, died by suicide in his bunker. A week later on May 8th, Germany officially surrendered. The war in Europe was over. The regime that had brought so much pain and suffering to the world was no more. The fall of Nazi Germany was a testament to the resilience and determination of the Allies. It was a victory won through blood, sweat, and tears. It was a victory that came at a high cost, with millions of lives lost and entire cities destroyed. But it was a victory nonetheless, marking the end of one of the darkest chapters in human history. In the rubble of the Reich, the world vowed, never again. The atrocities committed by the Nazi regime were laid bare for all to see, and the international community pledged to prevent such horrors from happening again. The fall of Nazi Germany was not just the end of a war, it was the beginning of a new era, an era in which the world would strive to uphold the principles of peace, justice, and human dignity. What happened to Germany and the world after the fall of the Third Reich? In the aftermath of the Nazi regime, Germany found itself divided, its people grappling with the horrors of the past and the daunting task of rebuilding for the future. The victorious allies split Germany into four zones of occupation, American, British, French, and Soviet. This division sowed the seeds for the Cold War, leading to the eventual formation of two separate German states, the Federal Republic of Germany in the West and the German Democratic Republic in the East. Meanwhile, the world sought justice for the atrocities committed during the reign of the Third Reich. The Nuremberg Trials, held between 1945 and 1946, were the most prominent of these efforts. 
These trials brought Nazi leaders to account, marking a significant step in the development of international law. Parallel to these trials, the process of denazification unfolded. The Allies initiated this program with the aim to purge German society, culture, press, economy, judiciary and politics of any remnants of the Nazi ideology. It was a mammoth task given the extent to which the Nazi influence had permeated every facet of German life. This period of history also saw the birth of the United Nations, an international organization formed in 1945 with the primary goal to maintain international peace and security. The atrocities of the Holocaust prompted the drafting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. This document, for the first time in human history, outlined the fundamental human rights to be universally protected, a testament to the determination of nations to ensure that the horrors of the Nazi era were never repeated. The world learned hard lessons from the rise and fall of Nazi Germany, but the struggle against hate and tyranny continues. So what can we learn from the rise and fall of Nazi Germany? We embarked on this historical journey together, tracing the trajectory of Nazi Germany, a totalitarian regime that left an indelible mark on the world. We've seen how the economic turmoil following World War I created a fertile ground for the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. The allure of a strong leader promising stability and prosperity was a powerful force that swept the nation, blinding many to the inherent dangers of such concentrated power. We delved into the dark heart of the Nazi ideology, revealing its roots in racism, anti-Semitism, and an aggressive pursuit of territorial expansion. We bore witness to the horrors of the Holocaust, a chilling testament to the depths of inhumanity to which people can sink under the influence of hate. We followed the trajectory of the war effort, observing how initial successes gave way to the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. The regime's aggressive policies inevitably led to war, and despite early victories, the tide turned against them. The fall of Nazi Germany was a consequence of its own hubris and the unwavering resolve of the Allies. In the aftermath, we saw a defeated nation, its people grappling with the enormity of their actions and the world holding them accountable. The Nuremberg trials served as a stark reminder that even in times of war, humanity must uphold justice and morality. Through this journey we've learned the value of vigilance against hate and the importance of democratic institutions. The rise and fall of Nazi Germany underscores the need for societies to safeguard against the consolidation of power and to foster a culture of inclusivity and respect for all. History is not just about the past, it's about understanding the present and shaping a better future. As we move forward, let's remember the lessons of the past and strive to create a world that's free from hate, prejudice, and tyranny. We've journeyed through one of the darkest chapters in human history today. It's a sobering reminder of the depths to which humanity can plunge and the heights to which it can rise. It's an invitation to reflect, to question, and to engage in conversations that matter. So don't be shy to share your thoughts in the comments. Your perspective is a vital part of this journey. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, History Facts, for more insightful videos like this. Together we can learn from the past to build a better tomorrow.